Artificial intelligence and machine learning have the potential to make significant advances in the operational safety of aviation. We're going to be talking to a company called Didalian about how they're applying this technology on platforms as diverse as helicopters and all sorts of fixed wing aircraft. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are useful tasks when lots of data has to be analyzed. The question is, for which sets of data is this function of greatest value in aviation? So we decided uh, to go for vision systems, so everything on the camera, visual cameras, because this is where the pilot is still needed. There's a lot of automation systems going on already, uh, but the vision systems have not been, been captured so far. So this is why we decided, okay, here is something to be done. It's a sensor where we can use the data and, and enhance the safety as a pilot aid. Uh, and eventually, when we have the experience, go to autonomy of systems. So we started with uh, the VTD traffic detection, uncooperative traffic, uh, and we're doing wire detection. And so we can see the wires, all of these visual things that a pilot normally does, and a system is not able to do yet. We can start doing this with our AI systems. There are an extra pair of eyes, a pair of eyes that looks 240 degrees at all the times, that does not get distracted, does not get tired, uh, and we can see little things that you would not see or hardly see as a, as a pilot. So that's really where, where it helps. And it makes basically a, a situational intelligence, a semantic about, okay, what is the environment about, right? We can do landing guidance. We see the runway with a database behind it of all the runways. We know where you are on the runway, if you're too high, too, too far left, et cetera. So we can help the pilot even with, with landing. We can do runway incursions. We can see if there's something going to be on the runway. Uh, and so all of these use cases you can think of that a pilot normally does himself, but there are so many things going on in the cockpit um, that, we can, uh, that we can help there. Didalian has been testing its technology with flight control specialist Moog to evaluate how best to integrate it into existing cockpits and flight management systems. We recently did with Moog a uh, full integration of our system on their Bell uh, OH-58. We integrated the, the navigation system that we have uh, and it was closed loop with their FMS and their autopilot, so we flew a 70 nautical mile flight, automated flight, based on the cameras in a GPS denied environment. Um, so that was very exciting. The VTD, the traffic detection, was, uh, was also installed, and even the landing guidance uh, was also installed, so the landing to, uh, to a certain point at the airfield. This was really the first time that our company did a closed loop flight uh, with our system on a real aircraft. Didalian describes what it's bringing to market as situational intelligence, which it believes is the foundation for increasing automation and autonomy. In the company's view, this goes beyond the inputs already provided by systems that warn pilots about the danger of collision with terrain or other aircraft. We see the situation, right? We have wires, we have a landing site, we might be looking for a landing site, we have a, we have a runway to go to, there might be another aircraft on the runway, we see other traffic going in, we have to navigate in a GPS denied environment, all those situational things. We basically make, make information out of it, and then you can either show that to the pilot, as a pilot aid, or we implement it into a system to then fly close loop. In my view, it's an extra sensor, so all of these systems are great, and we will need them, right? And there's gaps that these sensors do not, that do not cover at the moment. And with the vision systems, exactly where the pilot is still needed to really, to really look at you know, things and understand them and then take action, this is where we come in and have that extra sensor, uh, at the moment, electro-optical. Uh, we're stepping into infrared now as well to, uh, to make information out of it and make it actionable. But the path to getting artificial intelligence applications certified is complex requiring careful planning, significant investment, and lots of patience. A key initial goal is to convince regulators like EASA to grant the supplemental type certificates needed to fit the technology into existing aircraft. So in 2016, the company was founded by Luke, and soon it was found out, okay, the regulations is not there yet to certify machine learning. So a lot of work has been done with the FAA and EASA uh, and we've written two papers with EASA uh, on how this can be done and develop methods and how, how could you certify these things. So all of that work has gone into papers also of EASA and they have used it. You can even download the, the documents from the EASA website, so really proud of that as a, as a startup. Um, and all of this work has been done and now we are there that we have our first 
project in certification. So soon we'll have the SOI3, uh, which is the third of four audits. Um, and, and we're stepping ahead towards yeah, certification. And this will likely be the first uh, machine learning enabled avionics system for a safety critical use case in aviation that is certified. So we are really proud to be, uh, to be there. We will do our, our STC for a helicopter at the moment. Of course, the use cases are good for fixed wing as well, but by doing this STC, we have proven how to certify machine learning. So that tick in the box we then have, and then the next step would be to really work with OEMs, with customers, with operators, to specifically uh, develop towards their use case and, and have that have that STC'd on their, on their platforms. Meanwhile, the military sector is in a state of flux, with urgent demands for an acceleration in new technology needed to meet new threats exposed by conflicts such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine. At the moment, yeah, there is a very strong case there, right? At the moment we see, let's say, our, our use case for interceptors, for navigations, uh, on drones, larger drones, smaller drones. Uh, so there's a lot of, lot of use case around there. At the moment, I think due to the geopolitical situation, things are going very quickly. Um, and yet, the use of AI in military is rather new. It works or that does not work. So, especially our experience in certification for the civil world is very handy uh, coming in here as well in terms of AI assurance, trustworthiness, because also in the military you have to be sure it is taking the right decision or it is showing the right thing uh, in that sense. So, here our AI assurance methods uh, are very handy. So, once we have certified our, let's say, civil um, the project will also be very happy to help others in, uh, with our technologies, with our processes, with our tools to actually certify those use cases and, and assure those use cases in the military segment as well. Well, it's pretty clear that the seemingly relentless march of AI in aviation won't stop here. And if you need to stay on top of this technology, well, you'll find it very much in the news mix at AIN's Future Flight channel. So please keep coming back to AINonline.com slash futureflight for more stories and videos like this one.